Yo guys, how you doing? Today we're going to show you how to paint Dark Angels, clearly one of the most iconic chapters in all of Warhammer 40,000. We're going to be focusing in on how to get your armor this beautiful shade of green, keeping it dark and sinister, not the other details. They'll come in a future video. Let's get to it. Starting out with some Caliban green all over the mini. This is going to provide a good base coat. It's going to work for all of our shadows. It goes on a little bit blue, but don't you worry. By the time you've got this finished off, it will be a nice dark green, as you'd expect from the Sons of Caliban. Now we're going to start off with some highlights. Now, when I'm highlighting power armor, I like to do it in a certain method. We're going to highlight, obviously, all the top, where the light would get to it, and elevate the uh, light source on the model. And we're also going to highlight the bottom, but we go towards the bottom. We're going to pull everyone's attention down towards the base and the separation. So we've got a nice sort of top and bottom view of the mini. To do that, we're going to use a mix of Caliban Green and Warpstone Glow. We're going one to five Caliban Green to Warpstone. That means for every five drops of Warpstone, there's one drop of Caliban Green and use an equal amount of both paint and flow improver in your airbrush pot. So starting on the shoulders and the upper arms, these are really easy. We're going for kind of a, a strict-ish zenithal. So looking at hitting all of the high points on the mini. Don't want to do too much. Got to keep those shadows in there. You want these guys to look like dark angels and not salamanders. Here, I've tilted the model upside down. I'm using the overspray of the airbrush. I'm spraying past the head just to get to that gorget and get an edge highlight with the airbrush. It's super easy to do. Just takes a little bit of uh, pre-planning. Highlight the chest, aim for the bottom of the pecs, and now for the stomach, we're going to pull in a highlight off towards its right-hand side. So we're going to aim in there, that's the more open element of the midsection. It's also going to allow us to have a really nice dy dynamic highlight in there to just accentuate the movement. Now, I must apologize that during this clip, I accidentally filmed the highlight in with the wrong mini. Uh, this is part of a Dark Angels commission that I'm working on where we have 30 Dark Angels uh, infantry and unfortunately, I just grabbed the wrong one. So apologies for that. But all of the techniques that we use here apply to any Power Armor Space Marine of any chapter painting it using my style. So you can see all of the top section of the Marine, we've highlighted up. Now for the bottom part, we highlight it in on the thigh plate there towards the bottom of the thigh plate. We're going to carry that highlight pattern on as we go down to the legs. So here we are highlighting the back of the calf and the heel. And these highlights go towards the bottom of the armor panels. Obviously, that little ankle, ankle protector, that gets highlighted at the top. But by doing this, we end up with a dark area in the middle of the miniature, where there's usually some detail to capture your eye and bring some attention to it anyway. But things like the top of the boot, the bottom of the shin guard, and so on, draw your attention back down to the base. The base is an integral part of your minis. If you do a bad job on the base, it ruins the mini. Let's draw people's eye to the good job we've done. Right here, we're highlighting in up to about halfway up the shin guard there. And we can really embellish our highlight, brighten that up towards the bottom, right where that heel is. And there you go. We've got a nice highlight map all over the miniature there. We've got something that's given us a lot of those shadows, but we want to make those shadows look even darker. To do that, we're going to highlight up another step. We're going to grab ourselves some Necrotite Green from P3 and some Warpstone Glow. We're going to mix those two one to one. But in terms of the flow improver element that we add into our airbrush, we're going to go probably just over one to one, maybe sort of one and a half to one, two to three if you want. Highlights in now on the bottom of the armor, same as we did before keeping them a little bit more restrained. We need that transition, that previous coat of paint. All of those highlights serve to get a smooth gradient on our miniature. We could have gone straight from the Caliban green to this. We'd end up with a very speckly border. And that's one of the reasons why I go so high with the flow improver in this. It really helps to avoid that. I find that Necrotide green is just a little bit temperamental at times. It can speckle, so thin it down, keep Everything easy with your airbrush. Don't put on too much paint at once. You'll get that spider web in. So here we go. Here's an important highlight. We're working in on the face or the helmet of the Primaris Marine. Now, look at my thumb. We're just putting on a tiny amount of paint, letting the air dry it down, and just put a tiny, tiny spurt of paint on each time. 
we're looking for a highlight that is centered essentially right between the eyes, just follows down a little bit to the nose, and it's going to draw our viewer's attention right in to that eye line. When we finish these minis, we're going to go in with some glowing eyes. We've got loads of things we want to do to really build the attention that people will put on that face, make it a real focal point. And let's do that as well with our highlights. Now, the next step you guys can skip. If you're just doing one mini, you don't need to worry about doing a gloss varnish. But like I said, I've got 30 of these guys to do to make my life easier and to speed things up for this commission. I'm gloss varnishing everything. This is going to lower the surface tension on the miniature and make it much easier for my wash step to work because I need to recess shade every single recess on these models for my highlight method to work. Here's what I'm going to use. I've got some oil paint just from Windsor & Newton, regular ivory black, normal artist's oil paint. We've got some brushes to use for our highlights. These are synthetic brushes. These are just from the Army Painter. They're really good ones. They're the hobby highlighter brush. They've got a nice sharp point on them. And you've got to use a synthetic brush when using oils because the thinner will ruin a sable brush. Here's another crappy brush we use to mix in our pie dish. And we've got some odorless thinner. This stuff can get pretty pongy, so the odorless stuff is the best way to go. Now, like I said, you can use a regular acrylic wash for this. What we're going to do is mix that up with some of that spirit to a nice thin consistency. And while I'm doing that, let me shout out some Patreons. This week, we've had Hellstorm Wargaming, Faces and Bases, Lethal Styles, Daniel Konjevic, Andrew Anderson, and William Gross. Thank you very much to every single one of you guys that have signed up on Patreon. I really appreciate it. We've just started doing this full time. I couldn't do it without people like you. Thank you very much. So we're just testing the consistency of our wash here, making sure it just runs into the creases on that dish nice and easy. There's loads you can do with oil washes of different uh, thicknesses. Here we want it super thin just to get right into those recesses for me. And look, you touch the mini with the brush, the oil just flows into that gap. Now, like I said, for my highlight style to work, which is a very minimalist highlight style, we need to hit every single recess on the miniature. This part takes a little less time. In fact, doing it with oils takes a lot less time than doing careful brushed edged highlights. So I'm happy to do all of this because it speeds me up. When you're working on a commission, you kind of got to go fast. If you're batch painting because you want an army to do, here's the way. So with the oils, like I said, you just drop it into those recesses and it flows in there super easy. Look at how quickly we filled in those little vents, for instance. You can still paint it on, going around in lines, no issue whatsoever. But the lack of surface tension, because of the gloss varnish, coupled with how thin these oils are anyway, really, really helps you out. Look at how quick it is to do the recess shading on this arm. Test it yourselves, guys. If you've got access to some oil paints, have a go at recess shading with a regular acrylic wash, then try this. The difference will be night and day, I promise you. Look at it. So fast. Oh, got to do the hand. Bam. Done. Now, also, with oils, it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines. One of the benefits of oil paints is their drying time. It is extreme. You have hours to even days before this stuff is dry, depending on how thick it goes on. And there's a load of different tips and tricks I can give you in the future to help you choose which thickness of oil paint you want for your job that you've got in hand. We've got that workability, and I'll tell you why it's important in a bit. Coming in here, getting those recesses in the helmet, all those vents, let's just make sure we've outlined every other part of this dude's helmet. We want all of the shadows in here so that we're keeping it very dark and very moody. And that highlight we put on right in the middle of his forehead, it's going to really pop out against the rest of the shadows that we've got on the mini. Let's highlight around that mohawk line, tidy up some of that oil. Admittedly, we can pick it up in a minute and I'll show you that in a second, but let's just not make extra work for ourselves. While it's there, let's use it. And there you have it. All of this mini has been panel lined. Every part of it, job done. We're ready to start cleaning some of this up. 
We've got a couple of spots here and there. We've gone a little bit too heavy with the oil. All you need is a Q-tip. Now, we've gloss varnished the model. That's giving it extra protection, but don't be too rough with this stuff. Because, you know, just dabbing that on with the Q-tip is absorbing some of that oil off the surface. Here, I'm gently, and that's the key there, gently just removing some more of that surface area from the top of the backpack where the oil just overflowed onto those vents uh, a little bit more than I wanted it to. You can see from the Q-tip, it's just picking up that oil. You can do that all over, everything nice and clean. Those lines are great. All I've done here, I've hit the model with some matte varnish. Take away that gloss sheen, seal in all of those oils. Now this armor is starting to look bang on. We need those highlights. So we've got some Warpstone Glow and some Necrotite Green mixed one-to-one -one again. This is the same ratio that we used through the airbrush, but because we're brushing it on, we're getting more opacity. Therefore, this color is coming up brighter than before, and the same highlight pattern applies. So along all of the bottom areas of the mini, those chin guards, the feet, etc., we're doing our highlights much closer to the ground Remember, get that maximum separation of contrast. So there's no problem with running these highlights into areas that have got the darker Caliban green on. In fact, if we look at this leg, let's just draw a highlight now right up into those dark spots. This is going to give you that maximum contrast, the brightest color that you've got on the mini next to the darkest color that you've got on the mini. And any time you can do that, you are basically just putting a point of interest on the miniature. People are gonna wanna look at things like that because of the amount of contrast that's there. You get a lot of that down, everyone wants to see your mini. You see here, just highlighting a couple of those light lines along the back of his calf, getting the heel, a little access port, whatever Space Marines have got on their space booties, who knows what they are. But those highlights come in really really sharp we're using the side of the brush using some nice thin paint quick tip for you guys the consistency of your paint for your highlight lines should be thin enough that when you put your brush into the paint it easily picks up that paint but not so thin that the brush doesn't pull up too much paint and distend and blow out at the top this takes some getting used to use a wet palette always have a little bit of water at the side of your wet palette and sort of use that to sort of mix to taste. Don't taste the paint, obviously, but don't just put a load of water into your paint. Just use it a little at a time to get the consistency you need. You'll get some real sharp edge highlights just like this. Now for the shoulder pad, we need to do a highlight, a dead straight highlight down the inside of the shoulder pad. We're putting this highlight on to help enhance the shape almost all the time. Highlights go on to emphasize the shape of something as well as to show the effect of light on it. Notice we are leaving a gap where that oil wash went in, that real nice dark line around the edge of the shoulder pad. That once again is that very dark to very light contrast and that's gonna really help give us some depth that we don't really have on the mini. Remember, that shoulder pad is basically just one smooth surface. There is no divot around the outside there. So we're giving a little optical illusion to our viewers, making it look like that shoulder has got a lot more detail to it than it actually has. For the helmet, don't know why Space Marines have got earmuffs. That's why I always think of those, but get a little line on top of that. Get some lines in on the helmet underneath the lens and then above it as well for the island. Now it's really important that when you're painting that little line underneath the lens, you don't paint anything on the lens itself. You must make sure that you're just hitting the helmet at that point, especially if you're looking to do glowing eyes and so on. You need to get a nice sharp line there to help snap that detail into focus. Let's do a couple of quick lines now underneath the vents on the front of his grill. I normally only do the top two. Just helps give me a little bit more separation with everything else that we've got going on there. Apologies, you can't see this one behind the, uh, the chainsaw, but we're just doing a highlight on that mohawk style helmet accessory. Gotta love that. And there you go. By the time you've done that, you've got a Space Marine helmet that's looking real in focus. Now for the shoulder pad, we also wanna do the shoulder pad trim. I missed this originally. We're just doing a quick couple of lines around the outside. And then the tricky one 
is just here. We're just getting a small highlight. Keep these very small and keep them very, very thin just on the inside part of that trim. Having that double highlight in there just helps to emphasize both edges of that trim, keeps everything looking nice and sharp. And again, like I said earlier on, highlights are almost always there to help define detail as well as the effect of light. Now here we have a little bit of uh, battle damage we put on there. When we separate this guy from the sprue, a little bit of backpack just took a little bit of a, a, a dink. So we just put a quick line in there to help that, help that out. Just doing a quick little crow's foot style, three lines to come down to those bottom corners. I find that on the Primaris backpacks, they really lend themselves to that little highlight. And there you go. All those highlights all over that armor. The rest of the details, I'll show you guys how to do in future videos perhaps, but the main purpose of this video is to show you how to get that beautiful green armor. And as soon as you've got those details in, that looks even darker. The brightness of the red, the gold, just kick it off a notch. This guy looks sick. You wanna see how you do the bases? There's a YouTube video on that. Go see how to boost your bases. Otherwise, follow some guides on Patreon to help tie it into the base. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Mohawk Miniatures, and join me live on twitch.tv forward slash Mohawk Miniatures. We'll see you guys there. Peace out.